So I'm talking about taking things by force. Because nothing just going to come to you as far as like uh, what God promised you. Like even though God promises you stuff and it's in your inheritance, it's supposed to happen to you. You'll have to take everything by force, including your health, including your body, including your body goals, your mental goals. It all comes through time. It all comes through time. When you set goals, some goals, you shouldn't set them to be immediate. The anointing of patience is where you could look at the path to get something that you want to get with maturity, with endurance. Think about it. The anointing of patience is where you could look at something that you know that you're going to achieve and look at it through the lens of it may go through time and I'm okay with that. I'm going to work it while time is going past. Saints, what I want you to catch is you do not ever want to not carry longevity in your heart concerning things. Weariness is a foolish response to time. That's what it is. Weariness is a foolish response to time. So when somebody gets weary, that's somebody that didn't even weigh out. I'm going to get what I want. But I'm going to get what I want at the right time. So people get weary because they're foolish towards time. Weary people are weak minded people. Weariness is not a good look for the satanic kingdom to observe because demons watch you intently too. It's not just God that watch you. Evil spirits watch you and they look at weariness and they know your weak spots. When you are a weary person, evil spirits know that you're weak. They know. So if you say no to a temptation, they already know. I just going to use time. And when I use time, you're going to crumble eventually. It's not good. You have to learn endurance, even in prayer. You set yourself in prayer. You don't say, okay, I'm going to pray for this amount of time. Just flow in it and stretch yourself. I was just telling Juan, when I do certain workouts, when it's burning and you want to stop, is when I set a fresh goal and say, seven more. Now you're burning. You want to stop. You usually stop. But you set your mind to go further. That's the same way it is with seeking God. You seek God with a dedication. Dedication is a determined perspective that you're going to achieve something from God with God no matter time space no matter what it takes some of you are act like you want to be free nigga you lying because if you want it to be free there's times where you could get off of social media there's time where you could be in the word. There's time where you could be crying out to God. There's times where you could be praying in the spirit and voicing to God that you want to be free. There's times that you have in a day where you could work towards achieving what is rightfully yours mentally, emotionally. And see, saints, a lot of times when we get overwhelmed, then we cry and we say, I, I don't like this. I don't like this. Only because you overwhelmed. But other times you get complacent again. 
See, son, this is powerful. You can't get complacent. You have to stay in fight mode concerning what you're going to achieve. Concerning what is rightfully yours, you got to be in fight mode all the time. You can't switch up on Tuesday from the momentum you had on Monday. Tuesday should actually be a greater realm. When you get to Wednesday, it should be greater than Tuesday. For the rest of your life, I want you to study this. How do you know that you had a successful week? Where were you on Sunday? Monday should be deeper. Where was you on Tuesday? So, saints, a lot of times when I'm doing broadcasts, I'm meditating scriptures so that I don't have to stop and read it from the word. Yesterday, Romans 1.18, Nahum 1.2. I learned those by heart. Nahum 1.2, I learned that three minutes before I got on the broadcast, I was already studying something, but I mean that I'm going to inflict, inflict pain to my brain to learn something. I make up in my mind that I will not let my mind not obtain divine words. So I push my brain and I don't give my brain time to be lazy. You grab your brain and you tell your brain, you're going to learn this. You're going to learn it. You're going to learn it now, not tomorrow, not two weeks. Says I've been doing this for years. Now, let me just say this here. There's pastors that take seven days to write down their sermon and preach it on a Sunday. We all know pastors like that. They write down their sermon. They preach on Sunday. When I started preaching, I said, no, nah, I ain't doing that. Uh-uh. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit flow through me all the time. I'm not waiting for no seven days to catch no revelation from God. I'm going to be a continual well for the Holy Spirit to speak through. And saints, you know why people don't enter into that place? Because they get lazy. They say, okay, I'm going to write this down. I write this down. And saints, there's pastors that will write down for seven days. And on the seventh day, he ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying nothing. He has seven days to understand an assignment. And on the seventh day, he's searching for what to say. That's a constipated preacher. Constipation makes you stuck. You're not achieving the real greatness that you was called to achieve. You stuck. Because the only way for you to break out of that constipation is you're going to have to be intentional about this good fight of faith and taking up yourself another notch in obtaining things and taking things by force. If you just let yourself remain passive, you're not going to catch nothing. Let me talk to you about tongues and interpretation of tongues. Uh, uh, the first word of knowledge that I started operating in real strong was through tongues and interpretation of tongues. When I prayed in tongues, I knew that you could pray for the interpretation. After I prayed in tongues, I just started prophesying. The prophecy was correct. You know why? I'm going further. Some people are just praying in tongues. Now I'm in the interpretation of tongues. You know what I'm doing? You're stretching your soul out of fear, procrastination, stubbornness, laziness. You're taking stuff by force. When you take stuff by force, it subjects itself to your authority. That goes for everything. When I was broke, I was poor, I took finances by force. I didn't let nothing stop me. 
I didn't have no trouble sewing big. I didn't have no trouble honoring God. I didn't have no trouble sacrificing. I wasn't thinking about what's going to happen to me. How he look like you? <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. He had on the same outfit you had on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. In the same hairstyle. In the same body mass. <laughs> and I took things by force. Teaching the word, take things by force. I memorized the scripture. I memorized the word. Like Nahum 1, 2. I preached that yesterday. But I still got it in my... Look, I didn't look at that scripture today. But I still got it inside of me. That say that God is jealous. The Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth. And it's furious. The Lord will take vengeance upon against his adversaries. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. See, I learned that less than three minutes yesterday. I didn't look at that today. I read something else today. But yet, I have stored it in my heart. Nahum 1-2. And then watch this here. We did Romans 1.18 yesterday. Uh, uh, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's Romans 1.18. I remember that from yesterday. I didn't look at that today. So it's been over 24 hours. I haven't looked at that. But now I have the word in me. All right. You see what I'm saying? So when we go here and then I did second Peter two twenty nine, the Lord know how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Huh? He, but, but he reserved the unjust. He reserved the unjust unto judgment to be punished. See, see, these are all scriptures I did yesterday. I read none of these scriptures today with the Bible, but I read them in my mind. A bitter person has mastered remembering foolishness. Even worry is memory being activated. You can't be stressed without memory. What I'm saying to you is that whether you free or you are bound is all tied into what you are choosing to do with your soul. And if you truly want to be free, if you'll pit the work in to guide your soul and guide your mind, you'll be good. There's people don't want to take the time to guide their mind. Then they want to act as if they don't got control over how they feel. Oh, I can't help how I feel. I can't help how I look at this. I can't help my feelings, my mind. I can't help it. Those are all the perceptions of a lazy person. When you're lazy, Satan will keep on riding over your head financially, mentally, emotionally. And Satan know you're not going to check him because you're not willing to put the work in. This is the state of a lot of people. They're not putting the work in to be free. So their definition of freedom that is, is impossible. Yeah, it's impossible because the equation that you're using, you don't want to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I think that's Philippians 2.12, 2.11, 2, 12, 2, 12. And St. Apostle Paul says something powerful. He said, as you have obeyed in my presence, obey also in my absence. There's a series of people that you will only do what God wants you to do if somebody spiritual is looking at you. That's the only time you'll do it. That's false. God uses someone spiritual to jumpstart you. So even if they're not looking at you or acknowledging you, you should still be advancing in what they have already jumpstarted to you. God shouldn't have to teach you to meditate the word. God shouldn't teach you to be hungry for scriptures. God shouldn't have to remind you to pray and praise and give thanks. 
God shouldn't have to remind you to talk with him throughout the day. These are things that prove to you that you have death that you allow. You allow yourself to be a dead individual. The word of God says something powerful. It said the dead do not praise God. The dead do not praise God. The dead do not praise God. That's in Psalms. The dead do not praise God. The dead do not praise God. So just think about it. How much have you praised God today? So if I declare that you're dead, it's the truth. Praising God is the activity of life. It means that your soul is alive. If you don't praise God, you're dead. The dead do not praise God. They don't say thank you. And that's the state that a lot of people move in throughout their day. And they don't recognize they did. Well, I'm not dead because I listened to the broadcast. I'm not dead because I, you know. But what you don't understand is the broadcast should unlock praise. It should unlock the spiritual weapons. If you don't take stuff by force, somebody else is going to take it by force. And there's going to be talents, harvests, mantles that's supposed to come to you. That's going to come to them. In life, it's really Whoever is hungry is who eats. Whoever is thirsty is who drinks. Whoever is acknowledging their nakedness is who get clothes. The one that shops gets the clothes. The one that window shops watches someone else get the clothes. In life, if you don't put your thumb up, you don't get the transportation in the spirit. If you just say, I wish somebody give me a ride, you will be without transportation your whole life. They used to say in the old time day that empty mouths don't get fed. That was really prophetic because Proverbs 13 says that a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. If your mouth is not going to move towards goals, some of you all, you never even took in the time to prophesy what you're going to accomplish. How many of you are talking about for years you're going to lose 20 pounds? Or how many of you all say that for years you're going to gain 20 pounds? Or for years you say, I'm going to start working out. You have never even did a decreeing session about working out. Why haven't you prophesied about working out? Why haven't you said in the name of Jesus, I decree that I'm working out. I received the grace for exercising. I received the grace to exercise my body. I received the grace to eat, not overeat. I received grace to drink water. I received grace to stretch my bones. I received grace. 